Our final speaker shares this value of legacy. He deeply honors the lineage of leaders that have come before him, and he has been working as a leader in sustainability for decades. He self-describes as an ultimate optimist, and he recently joined Amazon as their first head of worldwide circular economy. Please join me in welcoming George Bandy Jr. George, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Now, I understand that you've previously shared stages with Bill Clinton and Barack Obama, so it is great to have you with us at Circularity 20. <laughs> 21, excuse me. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, I'm grateful. So I wanna start at the beginning. You first served as a sustainability officer for uh, the University of Texas at Houston, and then you were recruited by Ray Anderson and worked at Interface for 15 years. When you think back to how you got started in this work, specifically around the circular economy, where did that begin? Well, you know, I think that uh, the focus was initially on how do we begin to get better at uh, what we were doing and how we were doing it within uh, the work that was there. You know, there was a specific focus on moving away from a linear model, which was the take make waste model, uh, to looking at how do you begin to look at how waste equals food and beginning to look at resources. And when you're at a university, one of the things that was uh, a, a bad word was asset management. You know, asset management was warehouses of old vehicles old Apple IIe computers that you could only play Frogger on. We had things in there with overhead projectors, televisions with the straps across the top. And so what eventually would happen with these materials at the end of their useful life? Uh, and then it opened up a whole nother conversation around where did it go at the end of its useful life? Where were the landfills located? What about the communities of concern? What about social justice related to those issues? And so we began to open up dialogue around that using the natural step system conditions as a platform to begin to engage faculty advisors. Um, I'm, I'm grateful to Brian Yeoman and John Pareto for giving me the opportunity to, to lead in that space. And um, I'm excited about what we're gonna do moving forward. So you joined the Amazon team just five months ago. What do you <laughs> actually do as the worldwide head of circular economy there? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> right now, I'm really uh, using a lot of our effort to begin to develop relationships with the people who are there doing amazing work. I think sometimes within the scope of corporate America, we lose sight on the human aspect of circularity and sustainability. We get so focused on uh, our individual goals around meeting uh, net zero accomplishments, or uh, we lose sight of all the great people that are doing work. So I've been spending a lot of time developing good relationships listening to foundational concepts and ideas, developing metrics uh, at Amazon to begin to think about things strategically. Um, so I, I'm going in with uh, confident humility that we're gonna be able to uh, make some adjustments and do some really great things as we move forward, in addition to the great things that are already going on in that particular space. I'd say that confident humility seems to be kind of your, your trademark, seems to be a bit of your thing. Um, <laughs> So you talked about your relationships. I mean, it's been kind of amazing to watch my LinkedIn just have so many people switch over to your team. I mean, you've got this deep bench of Amazon expertise and then some new folks coming from Apple and IDEO. It's an amazing team you've, combi you've combi compiled. Excuse me. Can you share a little bit about your actual ambitions? I don't think we've heard much about what circular economy will look like at Amazon. You know, uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, um, Amazon has been investing in sustainability and established uh, some incredible programs uh, prior to me arriving. Uh, so I'm learning about those programs and making connections. As you know, circular economy has a lot of significant components that are connected in a lot of strategic ways and finding the value of what's already there and then connecting those dots to allow my team to be able to have the impact that we need to is gonna be critical. Uh, Amazon made commitment to lower their footprint environmental and social through circularity initiatives uh, in operations uh, by doing some recycling programs, creating some circularity strategies, and also for our customers. Uh, I think developing new recycling infrastructure, investing in recyclable and recycled packaging materials, and investing in ways to support that recycling industry is going to be critical for our success. How is it going so far? Do you feel like you've been able to make any progress or what do you hope to accomplish in the next year or so? So I think that uh, 
you know, to whom much is given, much is required. Uh, so the expectations for Amazon is great. And I think that um, we have accepted that challenge as an organization and we're looking for ways to be creative about doing so. I think that uh, over the next year, I think that what people are gonna see is our increase in terms of how we communicate to our customers. We have a customer obsession that's critical. Um, some of the things that you may not know, Amazon Second Chance is uh, the online resource that we have where our customers can actually learn about prepaid postal returns around postal returns around collection services, Amazon recycling website in Europe, where we can take these materials back and begin to look at ways to trade in materials or to buy materials that have already been uh, refurbished in a specific way, find open box materials uh, that people can purchase so they can look at reducing the footprint of what they purchase at the same time. Uh, Amazon invented a machine uh, learning al algorithms to begin to create the smartest packaging choice for our customers to right size that packaging material and reduce the weight of outbound packaging by 36%. Uh, that eliminated about 1 million tons of packaging material, uh, equivalent of about 2 billion shipping boxes, if you think about those numbers. Uh, they've eliminated 27 million plastic bags from our device packaging in 2020 alone. So our goal is to make Amazon devices packaging 100% curbside recycled by 2023. And by doing that, we also have to invest in organizations like recycling partnerships that supports communities and local governments and education and infrastructure to look at measurements of curbside recycling, to invest over $10 million with the closed loop infrastructure uh, fund to finance recycling circular economy infrastructures in the US. So Amazon aims to increase their product and packaging recycling, ensuring that materials get back into the manufacturing supply chain and over the next decade, our investment in closed loop infrastructure will improve curbside recycling over 3 million homes and communities across the US. So it's a collaborative partnership. We've got to help our customers be able to get the materials back to us. And we got to begin to develop uh, circular economy models that allow the communities to also be able to benefit from creating ways to refurbish and use the materials in a different way and then getting those raw materials back so we can use them in a different way. So looking at our material flows as they come through our organization and making some investments in the appropriate ways and looking for ways for us internally to do some great work. So you've touched on infrastructure, communities, consumers, three three concepts we've talked a lot about this week at Circularity. One that you haven't mentioned that I know is pretty central to the sustainability plan at Amazon is, is climate. I mean, you, Amazon's committed to being net zero by 2040. You have the Amazon Climate Pledge. How does that body of work fit into what you're doing with the circular economy? Are they connected? Are they separate streams? What's that relationship between those two concepts that you're working on at Amazon? I guess the word I would use is concomitant. They're directly connected. I think that the work that we're going to be doing is evaluating and looking at ways to continue to add value to our commitment um, to the climate pledge. I think that there's a tie that's uh, going to be critical to our success, and that's minimizing waste, increasing recycling, and providing options to our customers to reuse, repair, and recycle their products appropriately, uh, sending less material to the landfill and more back into the circular economy is ultimately going to lower our carbon footprint. Uh, despite some of the challenges that we may face with recycling uh, in the recent years, Amazon believes that the long-term investing in US recycling systems is critical to our success. Um, our vision for a circular economy keeps resources in use for as long as possible. Uh, we're continuing to find new ways to support our sustainable disposal of packaging and products as a part of our commitment to the climate pledge and becoming net zero by 2040, you know, 10 years before the Paris Agreement. So it's directly connected to our success related to those particular things. At the end of the day, Amazon is, of course, extremely consumer focused. And, you know, we've seen plenty of studies about how younger generations, particularly Gen Z, want to shop with, with climate aware companies. They want to be more sustainable. And I'm curious if you can speak a little bit to how you see that interac interaction between systems change and consumer choice and what role decision making by the consumer can actually play in driving a circular economy or not. Wow, it's critical to our success. You know, I like to consider myself, you know, you had the millennials and this younger generation. I like to consider myself a perennial. I'm one of those things that I continue to keep reinventing myself every year and pop back up and try to come up with ideas and connections to allow us to be able to stay in tune with what it is that we're doing. I think it's a huge shift in our consumer mindset uh, when it comes to sustainability. They're more educated now. If you think about this, the first time the word circular economy was published was actually in 1988. 
right? It's one of those interesting things that people think that it's been around for a long time, but it was, and then of course in 2010 and, and in 2000, when you had a spike in raw material costs, then people began to think about circular economy in a different way. And it's beginning to happen all over again, which is probably why it's peaking in terms of its popularity around the younger generation, which is critical for us as we move forward and look at things as they change and move forward in terms of a future around circular economy. Uh, I, I think that we can no longer take things from Mother Earth's crust without thinking about a way to bring them back in an appropriate way, uh, because uh, God isn't granting us any more Earth. So we we have to think about things in terms of our balance between what nature can provide and what we need to keep as a resource, as a good tenant of the earth. Is consumption something that you're thinking about at all? I mean, it's so complex, right? But I, what we've heard this week a lot is conversations around really thinking critically around consumption. I know that's part of sort of the Amazon Renewed program and, and thinking through that, but talk about where consumption fits into the mix for you. I, th I think it's difficult. I think, you know, uh, the generation, as much as they are conscious of sustainability, they come in with a different set of lenses that we come in with. You know, if you think about um, microfish and microfilm, which I grew up under, you know, they have the disposable of everything at a phone uh, or at a laptop or at a computer uh, process. So um, if you look at this next generation, they have a different concept of how materials flow through their particular systems and they anticipate and in actuality, uh, I like to think of this, there's a fulfillment happening here. The generation before us expected us to come up with a solution for the problem that I don't think that all of the business is prepared for. They anticipated that we would create a model that would take the amount of waste that was being generated and turn it back into food. And, and I don't think that we moved as fast as we could or should have. And I think that the, the paramount for that is becoming a little bit more um, at hand, so to speak. And I think that they anticipated that we were going to win in that particular battle. I'm ultimately optimistic that we are coming up with the right technologies and people are coming up with scalable types of solutions that we can actually meet. And I think that there's going to be a balance. I think that there's a balance of what we anticipate in terms of people's usage of materials and, and those types of things and how we're able to scale those things and put them back into a technical loop. And it requires a lot of things from the consumer. But it also requires a lot from people who have done take make waste for an extended period of time to think about more cyclical solutions as it relates to specific aspects of our businesses. Eternally optimistic. I love it. So you worked under Ray Anderson and you've been working on the circular economy for longer than many of us, many of us in this conversation at least. Take a step back and reflect a little bit. How do you think this concept of circularity has changed over the last 10 years, 20 years? Um, it's gotten important quick. <laughs> so um, I'll say, man, Ray Anderson was a visionary leader that I, um, I owe a great a debt to that I don't think that I could ever repay, which is why I stay in this field of work. Uh, his commitment and his vision for circular economy was 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 paramount to uh, catapulting my career for sure uh, in this particular aspect. I learned more from him than I could ever learn from any coursework or any class that I've ever taken. So um, shout out to uh, Ray and his legacy for being who they are. Um, I, I think that the vision for where we're going as it relates to circular economy is is becoming more encompassing. So um, I think before it was very linear in the way that we even thought about sustainability. Everybody had their specific area of expertise. I think what circular economy does is it builds those bridges between the things that we had not thought about in terms of their connectivity in a different way, right? Um, thinking about the impact of the materials that come through an organization and what can be recycled, what can't be recycled, how you increase post-consumer recycle contracts connecting procurement, connecting end of life, looking at all of these things in a different way, looking for outsourcing opportunities to create platforms, to build education, to build infrastructure, to allow these things at a scalable level, to be able to look at how we're able to uh, manage the resources that come throughout organizations that we work with and partner with, um, and then having influence over people that we do business with. So I think that you know the connectivity between that and the climate and looking at reducing those things that we can reduce uh, from looking at materials in a different way or creating uh, closed loop networks in a different way or looking for ways to generate resources and create um, 
opportunities for businesses to partner with us. I think that those things are ways that we're going to see uh, more and more connectivity across sustainability overall, rather than looking at these silos of sustainability strategy that are kind of um, put into uh, containers and not connected to these other parts of the organization. Because digging too deep into one thing can make you miss the connectivity to how it impacts others is where we make a lot of mistakes. So I think that circular economy gives us a more robust view of how things connect with each other across multiple aspects of the sustainability spectrum. Absolutely. Connectedness, context, community as well. And pivot now looking forward, what do you think this conversation will look like in five years? Where, where do you hope the conversation around the circular economy progresses to in, in five or so years? Uh, you know, I really would hope that, um, you know, as we begin to build out uh, our concepts related to what we see within different organizations, um, that more companies will be building their own circular economies that connect with other circular economies uh, and become second nature to the brands and the consumers. Um, the more we're able to put back into the ecosystem, and out of the landfills is more beneficial for everyone, especially as brands and companies are working to lower their carbon footprint. Um, I hope that at Amazon, we can continue to inspire and, and more of our customers to participate in circular economy programs with Amazon Second Chance and others that we'll be developing. And I know we will continue to support the closed loop infrastructure fund to help improve circular economy infrastructure in the US and beyond. Uh, and hope that these programs like ours are inspired with other companies that are connected to us uh, to get involved in the ecosystem and create a much more mature life for all of us that gives future generations an opportunity to enjoy the things that we've been able to enjoy. Something that I, from afar, have gotten to see you do, and I think what the community really respects you for is, is being pretty bold and courageous and jumping into a new organization now and trying to really build something new. And you recently gave uh, the commencement speech at Alabama State University, and something that you talked about that was <clears throat> having the courage and genius of a vision, which I thought was so beautiful. Can you talk about what gives you so much courage? Um... You know, my father left a legacy. He was a, a House of Representatives and also a, um, a minister. And, and, and one of the things that he taught me growing up is having responsibility for generations that you haven't seen. And it was very difficult for me to understand when I was young as to what he meant by that. But the older I've gotten, the more I've began to think about um, how do I create what's called a living legacy? So how do you live in a way so that people are able to see courage and genius in you? Sometimes you're going to make some mistakes. Sometimes you're going to fall. But I think that one of the things that sometimes gets lost along this sustainability journey is, is that we're human and we're going to make some mistakes. But if you make mistakes trying to do the right thing, I think that people will give you a little bit of grace in terms of how you're able to move the needle. I think that success from any organization or any individual as it relates to leaving a legacy is greatly dependent upon the people that you work with. I think building great teams, respecting people's ability, understanding their talent, investing in others, uh, builds a system that allows the system to be able to continue on. Every organization that I've worked for or worked with, they still have systems in place that generate sustainability above and beyond. You don't know what types of impacts each individual left and went back home with and created as they left the organization or moved to another organization. I think that that's where true legacy is actually being built and creating diverse legacies is critically important. You know, I always use this poem, you know, by Benny Mays, we have only just a minute, only 60 seconds in it, forced upon us, can't refuse it. We didn't seek it, we didn't choose it, but it's up to us to use it. Must suffer if we lose it, give an account if we abuse it. Just a tiny little minute, but our eternity is in it. So I always use that as a, as a measuring rod for am I actually giving as much as I can to whoever I can to benefit the greater good. And I think that being at this organization is going to give me a platform to be able to do that with the collaborative partners and working with uh, the leadership that's in front of us, Kara and, and, and Jeff Bezos and the leadership team that's there is going to give us an opportunity to really do some great stuff. So I'm humbled at the opportunity and grateful and we hope that we're able to do some things that actually manifest into greatness as it relates to circularity for our organizations and beyond. 
So well said, as always. We are quickly running out of time. And so the last question I want to ask, it gets back to that idea of personal legacy again. And, you know, you have so beautifully described your appreciation for the people that have come before you and the legacy that you want to leave personally. If you could just in one sentence or two kind of define the the hallmark of the legacy you want to be leaving for yourself and for Amazon, what would you leave this community with that is equally trying to think about what legacy they want to leave for, for the world with their materials, their circular economy strategies, and as organizations? Ooh, that's a big one. Um, I think that the legacy uh, end of, you know, I, I'll say that my individual legacy is not more important than the legacy that I feel the organization will leave. I feel like the impact that Amazon has had and will have uh, will be able to influence others to be able to see um, how important and how critical it is for us to begin to embrace circularity in a different way globally. Uh, I think that some of the things that get lost is that by doing this at a very strategic level, we have impact over things, social justice issues, engagement, uh, uh, levels of creating new businesses, uh, partnerships and collaborations. I think that um, as we begin to build this out and people see us begin to invest in these communities and invest in these opportunities, I think the legacy that we will leave will be how many other organizations are spawned to do the same thing. I think that that's where you begin to see the connectivity and the impact of what an organization can do and influencing consumers and customers at the point of opportunity. Whatever that point of opportunity is, if it's them doing research, if it's at the point of sale, if it's at uh, the point of purchase, whatever that might be, let's try to have that influence so we're able to educate at the same time to be able to influence people to think more around circular economy and looking at how they use their resources more strategically and become a contributor to the circular economy in a different way. So I'm hoping that, you know, when I'm long gone and, and, and others have come on um, behind me that they appreciate what we were able to invest, but also understand that your investment is only as good as the organizations that you influence and that those organizations can catapult those messages across multiple platforms because you see me, but seeing me, there's a there's hundred people at Amazon standing with and next to me that are also as committed and their humanity is critically important to the success of how we move forward. So I'm grateful to be aligned with such great people and uh, excited about uh, the things that we're gonna do in the future. And we look forward to kind of keeping our lines of communication open with you guys to share with you some of those accomplishments over the next years. I think that is a perfect place to leave it. Thank you so much, George Bandy Jr., Head of Worldwide Circular Economy at Amazon. Appreciate your time and sharing what you're doing with us. Thank you. Mm -hmm.